is Jerwina Arnejo, um, currently an instructor at the University of San Carlos. Next, let's go to number 20. Now, a teacher demonstrates an equilateral triangle to his class. If one side is 12 centimeters, what is the area of the triangle? So, you have an equilateral and you know that equilateral triangle has equal sides. Okay, all three sides are equal. So, when we determine the area of our equilateral triangle, we make use of the formula. So, what formula are we going to use here? So, if you have um, all in my um, discussion a while ago, so if it's an equilateral triangle, we draw. Imagine that we have all sides, so dimension would be 12 cm. The area of the equilateral is given by this formula. Square root of 3 for 4 times a square of the dimension. So it would be equal to square root of 3 over 4 times 12 squared. So 12 squared, so you just 12, just have to multiply it by 12, 12 times 12. So square root of 3 then over 4 times 12 squared, which is equal to 144. And then you can simplify. So by following the divisibility rule, you know that 4 is divisible by 144. So 144 divided by 4 will give you 36. Then you just copy the um, square root of 3, the one inside the radicum. radicum. Then do not forget the, the, uh, the unit of your equilateral triangle. It would be 36 square root of 3. That is letter D of your choices. In a mathematics test, the mean score of a class of 30 students is 45, while that of the another class of 20 students is 48. What is the mean score of the two classes? So you have to get the total score of the first class and the second class. And then you add the both um, mean uh, total score of both classes and then you know the total number of students so divide it by that number of students so get the total score so total score of the first class so you just multiply you have there 45 that's the main rather that's the mean score 45 times 30 30 is the number of students so 45 times 30, you will get 1,350. Then total score, you have class 2. So you have there 48 times 20 as the number of students. So 48 times 20 will give you 960. Then let us get the total score of both classes. Total class. So you just add 1,350 and your 960. That would be equal to, hope you are also um, answering there. So it would be 2,310. And then the total number of students would be 30 plus 20. So you have 52. So the mean score then for these two classes would be the total which is 2,310 divided by 50. Right? So this, um, you just have to divide and then you will get answer of 46.2. This is now the mean score of the two classes. So that would be letter B from the choices. Number 22. The dimensions of a rectangular shaped cardboard are 8 cm by 3 cm rotated about the axis of 8 cm in which you can form or which to form a cylinder. Now what is the volume of the cylinder? So it's better that you're going to represent this through um, by drawing it. The first condition there, you have a rectangular shape. So, draw a rectangular shape. 
So you have the dimension, so you have eight, you have three also here. Next, you are to rotate. So rotated about the axis of eight centimeter, which to form a cylinder. So this one, the eight, so you're going to uh, rotate it such a way that you're going to form a cylinder. Okay. That is now our um, cylinder. So this is the three centimeters. So the three centimeters here is our um, circumference. Then we have here. So we know that in order for us to determine the circumference, we make use of the two pi r. So the uh, to get the radius of this the circle okay of the base of your cylinder so that is three which is equal to two pi r so to get to get the radius so we just divide this by two pi two sides but also this one by two pi so that radius then would be equal to three you can solve that out three over two pi so we now have our radius. Now to get the volume of our cylinder, so we make use of the formula pi r squared h. So pi, then the radius is of that. So you have 3 over 2 pi squared. And then you have the height. So this one, the 8, eight centimeters times you have 5 times 9 over this one. You need to square also this one. Now become 4 pi squared times 8. Then you can cancel 1 pi. What remains now would be this one. 72 over 2 over 4 pi. So that is now our answer. So check your choices. If you have there, you are 72 over pi, or pi. So make sure that this one, you can still simplify this one. So try um, dividing 72 by 4, then you will get 18 over pi. That would be letter C from our um, from our choices. 18 pi to be centimeters. That's for one number 20. Go to number 23 now. Suppose, so again, this is an example now where you need to um, place your triangle or your triangle is in a coordinate plane system. So suppose the triangle is flattened in a coordinate plane with vertices located in this um, ordered pair. You have negative 9 and 3. You have negative 3 and negative 9. We also have 13, negative 1. Now, what is the perimeter of your triangle? You don't know what are the dimensions of your triangle, but you have the ordered pairs for you to locate or for you to draw your triangle. If you have with you there your um, paper or draft, so you can draw that triangle. This is my coordinate plane system. So roughly, I'm going to draw my triangle be in this manner somehow look like this one so this is our our 9 3 and this one this is 13 negative 1 then this is our negative 3 negative 3 and negative 9 so you make use of the distance formula so distance formula you have this one so x sub 2 the square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 you need to square this one then plus y2 minus y1 and you square it as well get the square root for that so you just need to find so whether you can pair this one negative 3 and negative 9 so if you are going to pair this one so you can assign either which is your x2 or your x sub 1 right or you can also use this one to get the dimension for this one so these two ordered pairs 
then for this side here this one the 90 and the 13 one and then this side we can call this our stance one then we have here our and also have here our distance two and we can have this as distance three so this distances that you can solve will be your same time the length of your the side of your triangle so for distance one use of this ordered pairs this is our x sub two this would be our x sub one so this is our y sub two this is our y sub one as well so distance one would be equal to six square root of five right so that is for distance one for distance two a okay, distance two can make use of this ordered pairs so if this is our x sub two is our x sub one negative nine is our y sub two and then negative one is our y sub one so substitute that in your distance formula your distance two would be equal to 10 square root of 5 and distance 3 distance 3 we make use of this ordered pairs so if this is our uh, if this is our x sub 2 it's our x sub 1 13 y sub 2 is 3 and then y sub 1 would be negative 1 take note of the signs here class so sometimes the signs would make us confused so you have to be aware of the different signs here so um distance three would be equal to eight square root of five after substituting it in your distance formula so perimeter then be equal to distance one plus distance two plus distance three since they have the same um, numbers inside the radicand sign so you all you need to do is just to add the coefficients here the 6 10 and the 5 uh, 6 10 and the 8 so 6 plus 10 you have 16 plus 8 so you have 24 and then you just copy the on inside your radical sign and to 4 square root of 5 this is now the dimension of your your triangle so that is letter a from the choices Number 23 is quite tedious. The technique here is can if if you don't want to draw it, then you can directly pair your triangles here, right? So that uh, it can save you some time as well. Next, we have number 24. Now, the sum of money of Billy and Xander is 4,230. If two-thirds of Billy's money is equal to five-sixths of Xander's money, how much money does Billy have? So again, we can represent the money of Billy and Xander in we can we can represent this as x and y variable. Do that. So we can express we can let x be equal to Billy's money. And then we can also have y as Xander's money. Next is to make use of the conditions here. If two thirds of Billy's money is equal to five six of Xander's money. So we can represent that. So two thirds Billy's money is equal to five six of Xander's money. So we can have this as our equation one. And then we also have X plus Y. So the total of both their money is 4,230. You can have this as equation 2. Equation 1, we can transform this one in such a way that y can be expressed in terms of x. So, you just have to divide this one, the left side of your equation for the 2 thirds x by 2 thirds, also with 5, 6 divided by 2 thirds. So, the rule in division of a fraction so you get the reciprocal and then you multiply you multiply now your two numbers so if we divide this one it will become from now x is equal to five six eight times you get the reciprocal of your two thirds which is three two three halves then times y so x then would be equal to four fifth y so you can substitute the value of your x here in your equation 2. So that would be 4 fifth y plus y 
is equal to 4,230. You can also express this in terms of y, rather y in terms of x. So you can do that as well. So this one, 4 fifth y plus y is equal to 4,230. So you get there, so you can divide this one. Rather you add first, you get the LCD, so 4 fifth, and then here you have 1. So you can add this one, it will now become 9 fifth y is equal to 4,230. Get the value of your y, then would be equal to 2,850. Now, if two-thirds of Billy's money is equal to 5, 6, how much money does Billy have? So, let's raise this one. Should be y in terms of x. Right? Just change the variables here. X as well then change this so since we are after Billy's money here so that would be 2350 so that's how much money Billy have so the third A which is 2350 okay. now let's go to number 25 so three pipes so number 25 is an example of a work problem so we'll be using the man hours here. So three pipes can be used to fill up a swimming pool with water. Now it takes nine minutes for pipe A to fill up the pool, while six minutes for pipe B. A third pipe, this pipe C, takes four minutes to empty the pool. How long would it take to fill the swimming pool given this condition? So the first two, so you have here, um, it takes different time to fill up the pool while the other even the third condition so it's the time to empty the pool so how long how long will it take to fill the swimming pool mm -hmm. let us represent that so first condition so it takes nine minutes the other one we have six minutes to fill and then the other the third condition is it would take four minutes to empty okay which is a total of don't know total time so you can have that as one over t next is to um, since you have um, you have your fractions you get the lcd of these three numbers the least common denominator for 9, 6, and 4. So the LCD for that would be 36. 36, yes. And then you just add. Okay, so 36 divided by 9, so that's 4 so times 1, so you have 4. And 36 divided by 6, that's 6 times 1. So that would be... 6, 36 divided by 4, that's 9, times um, negative 1, so you have negative 9, equal to 1 over t. So 4 plus 6, 10 minus 1, minus, rather minus 9, so that's 1, so that's 1 over 36, equal to one over t. and you just cross multiply to get the value of your t t then would be equal to 36 minutes okay. this is the total time to fill the swimming pool even the three conditions in the problem so that is letter d from the choices